All right, we're we ready? back. Oh, we're back. Oh, well, you are ready. We're back. We're back. Holy, that's so much enthusiasm is usually. I'm so excited. It's usually like no enthusiasm from from our side of the, no, the microphone I, I here. No, I love this. Okay. That sounded really sarcastic. It <laughs> really did. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was so, uh, all right. Well, we're, we we're actually back, right? We're, back. we're yes, actually, we're no, here. all sincerity, right? Oh, yeah. 100% back. Uh, and uh, welcome to our September 21, 2021 fan, fan, art, fan Friday. art Friday. And uh, we're just going to, we're going to kick things right off. We're going to jump right in. We have a couple of submissions we want to go through. Uh, this one comes to us from Kelvin Kamote. Kamote? Cam Camout? How would you pronounce that? Well, I don't know. We've managed to mispronounce it at least two out of three times now. Kevin oh Camote. My God, this poor guy. K K Modi. Anyway. Oh, K Modi is K where you're landing. <laughs> K That's your best guess. Kelvin sent us uh, something really cool. Um, we get a couple of these, uh, and this one really caught my eye more than uh, a lot of the ones that I see. This is a uh, Jinka. Yeah. So my callback to the Pokemon armors that uh, I became famous for making uh, a while ago. Um, I haven't done a video uh, about them on subjectively on the Subjectively channel in a long time, um, but they do still have an impact on people, and here's the proof. Uh, we made a, a really awesome uh, Livani armor uh, that uh, is really very well made. It's got a very um, manga uh, cover feel, feel to like it. I feel this could be like a, a Fire Emblem official art 10 years ago. Okay, okay. Reminds me of... Um, the Hunter x Hunter, the issue one, that little watercolor painting style, where it's like the values are kind of soft, but then they still have these like really sharp white highlights. It's almost- Yeah, it definitely has like a Copic or a watercolor feel, mm -hmm. which is cool because it's definitely digital. Yeah, but I really, really like it. Um, and it also, it also kind of feels like that watercolor with the white highlights also reminds me of the earliest Pokemon illustrations too. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just got this like late 90s, early 2000s It does, it has a very uh, nostalgic feel, especially the way this artist handled the graphic design. This yeah. like, narrow- That's uh, like Final Sarah Fantasy back there. Font. It's really, with the gradient. really nostalgic for me, at least yeah. that kind of graphic design and it's simple classic timeless yeah. um, um this is a pokemon i forget about a lot so i like Levani though it's i cute. honestly um i would never expect to see a gajinka of this design but it she's so cute yeah i like it too because this is it, it does what my favorite thing about these pokemon armors for me to do is is that it converts the personality of the pokemon into a human design so you kind of have this kind of innocuous, kind of cute, maybe a little naive looking character. But then you look down and they're holding this really big sword and you're like, wait a minute, is this person dangerous? Like at any moment, are they gonna swipe out and slice me up? And that's kind of the vibe you get when you look at Levani too, because it's like, its face is really cute, but you know, you know it's a praying mantis, you know that it's a, a deceptive leaf bug and you don't know if maybe it's gonna lash out and just attack you at any moment. And I feel like they captured that with this design really well. And I, I really, really like that. Very cute, yeah. very good job. Thank you, Kelvin. Sorry, I cannot pronounce the second part of that username. Kelvin Kamote. Probably Kamote. That makes the most sense. All right, uh, now we're going to move on to some Maza fan art, which I'm sure a lot of people are excited to see. This one came to us from the user uh, Mikiel Kristiak. Um, and this is some very, very nice fan art of uh, Lupacabra. One of, uh, I think, one of the fan favorites of the Maza region. We it get a, seems that way. We get a lot, a lot of fan, of fan art, art of Lupacabra. Um, which is funny because I, I like Lupacabra, I was happy with it, but I, I don't I, I don't remember it. A lot of the times I forget that I made <laughs> Lupacabra. Um, but this is a really, really beautiful painting. I really like this style. It has everything that I really love in a piece where it's, it's very um, geometric, it's very shapely. It's got a lot of very hard surfaces that you can put some really strong values on. Got a very clear light source, and it's got these really nice warm shadows that I love. Yeah, it, it's got that nice combination of really graphic line work, yeah. but still a lot of definition in the shading. Yeah. And you haven't gone too crazy putting in your highlights and your shadows. You know, it's not so much that it overwhelms the subtle quality the line art has. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. I think this person looking at this has a very similar approach to digital painting that I do where it would look like they had a nice rough sketch and instead of going over it again with you know a cleaner line they just sort of left it and painted with the lines and maybe went over a little bit more after they finished painting which I really like I like to do that 
um, and it comes out looking really strong because you keep those nice gestural lines. Like you have such a nice fluid movement around through this arm as it's sort of hunched over through the back, through the arm there. I really like that movement. And I love the, the um, sort of potential for movement in the entire thing. Like it looks like at any moment it could spring up you know, it's like hunched over and then it's ready to, yeah, to the, jump up. It's a lot of yeah. flexing in there, yeah. It's like a subtle, just like, check that out. Check out that shoulder, man. Pretty good. It looks like she knows someone's watching, too. <laughs> yeah, these these uh, Lubacabra fan arts uh, are giving me a, a better appreciation for one of my own designs, which is really interesting because, like like I said, like I like Lubacabra, but I, I, I don't think I liked it as much as I did before people started doing all this fan art of it. I love too this like this is such, such an easy thing to do but people don't do it that often like you can add different hues to shadows you mm -hmm. know you don't have to just do a darker color of whatever color the 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 the, the, the midtones are you can add in some reds you know i really like how it's, it's the red to green yeah yeah you you get an implication that there's a very strong like sunlight a very warm light hitting this character because that red gives you the sense of you know different it levels of light like hitting the they fur. They did their shadows in a green tone and then did a layer on top that was like a luminosity layer or something. Oh yeah, kind of looks like that here. Because the way it's around the edges, I think they wanted that really um, strong sense of luminosity, yeah. which is good. Yeah, it, you know, and that's that's the other thing, like especially if you're working digitally, it's so easy to sort of capture that just with a simple tool like the like a, 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 a linear burn It's okay to cheese mask. it. Cheese is your friend. It's not even cheesing, it's just it's you're using the, the medium. You're, you're taking advantage of the medium. Digital art has a lot of different things you can take advantage of. And uh, I think this came out really, really well. I love this a lot. So thank you, Mikael. This one, I love the, the username of this person. Uh, Fishbones. This came oh. to us from Fishbones. All right, Fishbones. That's good. And they and have... And we can pronounce it. And we can have... This is an easy one. Got that one. What is this? Feish bonus? So uh, this one came to us from Fishbones and a really cool Maza region trainer. Tra oh, this is, this is them. This is a self insert as a Pokemon trainer and uh, Noctavispa. So this is a really cool self insert Pokemon trainer. And uh, for me, I was interpreting it as like an ace trainer. I this, see that. this could be like the, the Maza region ace trainer, something about it. it's got kind of that uh, cool, suave, very uh, uh, aloof, but also, you know, just sort of like, mm. Well, Fishbones, your shoes are very cool. I love those shoes. Those are like the- uh, Really great shape on They're like those. the Pokemon Go shoes. The, the trainers mm, yeah. of Pokemon Go have shoes like that. Um, this is a, also some really great uh, handling of values in here too. You have the same, sort of the same thing where um, instead of just adding a darker tone here um, in, uh, in the, the shadows, you have a couple of different hues um, to give you a sense of uh, warm light and uh, you know some uh, secondary lighting here too with the purple in the uh, in the values on the leg in the back there, which is really nice. Yeah. And calling back to the first piece, the Levani piece, we have this uh, this nice white strong highlight on the outside there, which is really nice. What I like about this design and the way it complements this rendering style is that it's not too much. Yeah, yeah, it's it's enough. It, it really is. It's deceptively simple i think when you look right. at something like this you feel like oh that didn't take them very long to do but this is actually especially with something like draping clothing too because you have very baggy clothing here which is a difficult thing to, to actually capture successfully without it looking just like a big mush and mess a lot so they they, they have a, a good understanding of the way clothes would fall like that yeah and there's a lot of subtlety in linking this trainer design to nocta vista yeah. the yellow on the inside of the cape mm -hmm. just that very small it's not even a honeycomb Home, it's like the implication of part of a hexagon on yeah. the shoe. Yeah, yeah, that's and really then, cool. And again, the negative space on the glove. Uh, I just, I really enjoy it. I like that you didn't over-design it. Yeah, actually, I was. That's another really good thing about this is the the, the color design too. You mm -hmm. know, like Nocta Vispa, there's like a couple of some a little bit of saturation. You have these kind of purples, which work really well for the dark typing um, with Nocta Vispa. But it's nothing too crazy, uh, and then that really lets you enjoy these these really strong yellows here on the inside of this this little poncho. Good work. Really great work. I like this one a lot. So thank you very much, Fishbones. Great thank work. Thank you. How did you say that? I would say Regina. 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 Man, we're, having, we're struggling we're with the names. That... Owned in the comments. So section. this one came to us from Regina. I think is how we pronounce this artist's username. 
Um, but uh, please correct us in the comment if we're wrong. I feel like we've been, we're, we might be, so, might be bad and zero like, for all. Can you guys speak? <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? Um, but anyway, this one uh, is one of the several pieces that this artist has submitted over the past couple of months uh, in Fan Art Friday. Um, and it's just a really, really nice atmospheric painting um, to sort of build on the world we started to establish with the... Uh, the Sirens Pokemon, the Legendary Siren. So this is Melumist, the Deep Sea Siren. And we have this great little scene at the bottom of the ocean with a couple of other already existing Pokemon. We got Frillish and Inkay and Clamperl and Pukimuku and Pincurchin. Is that what this, this one is, mm -hmm. Pincurchin? I forget, that's a new one. You know, I think Pincurchin. my favorite thing about this piece, I, I've been trying to put my finger on it. Like every texture has the same almost like scrubby, really rendered, like you can feel the energy of the artist putting in the light and shadow mm. uh, quality to it that overall combined with the treatment of the lights and shadows just has a very sweet and folksy feel yeah very painterly yes it's you very know it's, it's it is digital but it, it does have I, I get the sense this person has worked with traditional yeah it, it's very crafty somehow in a way that it's difficult to translate with digital it, it's funny uh the the sense of a deep sea at the bottom of the ocean you don't the first emotion that would come to mind when someone tells you the bottom of the ocean Usually you wouldn't scary. think yeah you wouldn't think like cute like it's a little scary still i, I think it, if it's, the other pokemon weren't in there that were cute you i guess that's be true alien, yeah and, like. and the interaction the way melu is like kind of looking down at the rest of the pokemon it's sort mm -hmm. of like this very curious kind of sensation um, I think what I really love about this piece is that there's a really clear application of uh, reference here. Yes. You know, it's it's not just, you know, they're painting over a photo, but what they did was they could, you, could, you know, they looked at, you know, any, any picture that a human has of deep sea life is going to have a big light shining on it because there's no light down there mm -hmm. at all. So to find a reference of a strong light source shining on you know, the sea floor um, isn't that hard, but what is hard is applying that in a situation that is completely fictional. So I would imagine that these rocks, perhaps they weren't looking at a direct reference, but they, you know, they figured out their shapes and then they used references of different rocks to sort of compile that. And the way that the light is hitting everything and the way the shadows are cast and the way that different Pokemon are, you know, this this ink is kind of fading back into the, the background a little bit. And even the way the sand and the silt is kicking up right here, very clearly, you know, very opaque, just barely seeing uh, this, this silt and everything kicking up. It really does yeah, we sell see, that atmosphere. We see a lot of the artist's consideration for every aspect of this piece. Yeah. You know, even though there isn't really a background, the artist has still considered the background in the way that the four ground fades into yeah that. i mean there's not a background in so much as we don't see a village or a mountain or something behind it but they're considering the entire canvas and mm -hmm. that is really important and i think especially as me as an artist I, I don't usually you know my my canvas is usually just taken up by a character and then some geometry in the background to sort of fill out the composition but you know and and that i think a lot of our fan art looks like that too and i love that mm -hmm. but i think it's important to call attention to that in this piece because we don't see it that often with doesn't our it, artwork doesn't this just look like the page of a storybook yeah that yeah I would read to a maza region kid yeah it's it's narrative it's cute it's friendly it's interesting you know it, it gives me you know it makes me want to see and this person does be sure to check out the fan art friday channel the discord because this person did a bunch of different artworks for the other um sirens and for the reggies too the the maza region reggies um, and they're really great. And they have all of the same things that I like about this was, you know, good attention to detail, great environments, great lighting, um, and they have all these cute little Pokemon interactions. It reminds me too of this calendar that I used to have with, as a kid. Um, it was a Pokemon calendar and each, you know, month had a different like scene with like mm -hmm. 30 Pokemon in it. Um, and it was so fun to look, look through and see how they were all interacting with each other. So thank you very much, Regina. <laughs> Isn't this cute? So cute. So this one, uh, fittingly, came to us from Eeyore-ish. Uh, so I guess we have a donkey fan over here. Me too. <laughs> and um, we have a really cute, this is actually, I had to double check because I thought this was an actual blanket, but it is a, is a digital it's render. It's definitely digital. Um, but when I first looked at it, I thought it was a, a real 
blanket that someone had stitched. The values are very realistic. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this was, the, the artist said that they were challenging themselves by only using five colors. Mm -hmm. And you can see the five colors that they used uh, on the tassels of the blanket there. Um, so we have our uh, Mozzie and Mudbray and uh, M Muds Mache uh, is the evolution. I forgot for a second what I called <laughs> them because it's not Mozzie and uh, Mudsdale. It's a new Pokemon, Muds Mache. You know, um, I have to say, this fan art, this uh, faux woven blanket, yeah. is really giving me a deeper appreciation for this Pokemon. I was kind <laughs> of eh on it before. I, I also, you know, I would say I'm a, a donkey enjoyer. <laughs> average donkey enjoyer. I'm an average donkey enjoyer. I think they're really cute. Um, but the pinata concept, you know, it's cute, but you know, I saw the uh, Viva pinata commercials <laughs> back in the day alongside everyone else, and you know, that's fine. But this is so cute, especially the interaction with the little mud bray. Mm -hmm. I, I can see myself going on a journey with this goofy looking pinata Pokemon. See, actually, what I like about this one is that it, these were the Pokemon, when I designed them, I felt like this too. It's like, these are less like the journey adventure Pokemon. These are like the domestic Pokemon where you're like, you grow up with Muds Mache and like you go to grandma's house and there's Muds Mache and you hang out in the backyard and you feed them some, some barley and you know we go for a ride on the back um and they're animated like minecraft horses <laughs> they just kind of like slide yeah. their legs um i just it this is so great because this is again the kind of fan art that sort of takes me by surprise like sometimes we get 3d sculptures sometimes we get you know uh an actual like wood carving um and then sometimes we get a, a 3d render of like a blanket like textile not what i was expecting mm -hmm. at all and it's funny too because i feel like this wouldn't have caught my attention if it was just the actual digital piece just like in and of itself like it's very cute but i feel like putting it on a blanket adds to why i enjoy this piece so much because it Again, it contributes to what I was saying about Mozzie and Mudbray and Muds Mache, where it feels very homey. It feels very yeah, comfortable. Yeah, especially the woven blanket over this terracotta tile. Mm -hmm. Like every part of the set building yeah. of this illustration really contributes to the overall vibe. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the backyard of a Mazi, a Maza region trainer. Like I feel mm -hmm. like I went over to someone's house in the Maza region and they just have this like spread out um, and we're gonna have a picnic in their backyard. And it's so cute. I love it so much. It's, it's you know, it's so simple, it's so graphic, but like I said, because it's in this context, it, it makes it that much more successful. And I think that's something important to keep in mind when you're making a piece. Like we've talked about this before, but composition is so important and presentation is so important. You know, taking those extra steps to to add on to the, the feeling and the atmosphere that you want to convey with your piece um, goes a really long way. And I think that this artist did did that very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like that. So thank you, Eeyore-ish. I'm so glad that your name is Eeyore-ish. Like very it's, fitting. it's so perfect. Um, I don't know if that was intentional I or not. I hope you're not depressed. <laughs> just a little, they're just a little Eeyore-ish. Uh. And finally, I thought it would be appropriate for us to end on this as we are about to enter into Apoctober. Um, but this one comes to us from Anroco Draws on Instagram. And this is some fan art for uh, October of the main character, Celeste. And we have here sort of the scene where Celeste uh, gets hypnotized by the amulet to open the amulet. And this fan art came out really fast. Yeah, this is incredibly <laughs> fast. So if you haven't watched the video already, we just uploaded um, a sort of up-to-date uh, synopsis of the lore for October to sort of like prepare for the, the new month that's coming up. Um, Definitely check it out. We put a lot of yeah. Claire into and I it. both worked on it. Claire did the music and the background paintings, and uh, I did the character illustrations and the writing and the voiceover. And um, and it's it's I love I love I've said it before, but I love 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 when people give us fan art from these stories. We have a couple actually of mm -hmm. October fan arts uh, in the the Discord right now. I just love that people get excited about this because this is I would say the thing about subjectively that I love the most is being able to create my old worlds and my stories and stuff um, and to see a positive response from the fans is always fun and to sort of see like my own sort of style of painting and rendering especially with this specific character um, you know repeated in my fans artwork I love to see that it's I have to say the um, personal touches I'm seeing 
uh, come through in this artist style though yeah. are really fitting for the like pseudo horror genre yeah. that the world of Apocktober is set in, mm -hmm. like the scratchy quality and the values. Uh, there. Yeah, yeah, like the graphic triangles coming through the values. It's effective at transitioning from dark to light, but also it really helps sell this atmosphere mm -hmm. there's something spooky sketchy going on in these shadows this is a piece where there isn't much of a background it's more like how i do my pieces but they did do a good job breaking up the space in mm -hmm. the piece you know they they have a good line of motion for the the viewer to follow up through the arm then down into the amulet which is sort of the focus of the piece um, and the character takes up the majority of the canvas so you're not distracted by the fact and then the background isn't just a solid color they did my patented strat of just taking like a png <laughs> from from google images of like worn paper or like chipped concrete or something and breaking up the background with a little bit of texture and a nice simple geometric shape only thing is and i'm gonna you know this is i've been hearing this my entire life uh with well since i've gotten to college at least just tangents here you might want to scooch celeste over just a little bit so that her elbow isn't colliding with the, the border of the uh of the canvas here, um, but other yeah, than that, that is a little unfortunate. I I do that all the time. You gotta and just do like when a I was in college. Check yeah, your sketch when, face when I was in college, it drove me crazy. I would I would show my pieces to my friends. Uh, one of my friends in particular, every time I would show them my it's pieces, Alish. it's Ailish. It's Ailish. She knows. It's Ailish. She she would always she would be like, "There's a tangent there. There's a tangent there." And she knew she would say like, "You're gonna hate me, but there's a tangent." <laughs> it was like the first critique every time because I always had tangents. Um, and I probably still do it to this day. Sometimes I do it passive aggressively I, too. To now I'm just like, you know what, before. fucking, there's a tangent there. I don't give a shit. Um, but yeah, I love this. Um, I'm so happy that people like the Pocktober story. Um, if you haven't watched that video yet, please go check it out. We put a lot of time and uh, effort into it. And I think it represents a, a direction that we want to take um, our creative efforts uh, in, in the future um, with this channel and beyond the channel. So thank you so much, Enroco Draws. Thank um, you, very cool. Great work. And thank you guys all so much for all of your submissions yeah, this month. Thank you. I know that for for odd, on our half, on our part, we did not do a lot of new content this yeah, September. Yeah, that synopsis really ate up a lot of our That time. was pretty much our, all we were it. doing um, for the month of September, but you guys still were giving us fan art, and thank you so much for that. Hopefully we get to see some great new Apocktober submissions coming up. Uh, the October Fan Art Friday is mm -hmm. going to be mostly those, I'm imagining. Um, so be sure to check out. I posted the Apocktober prompt list on the community channel. I'm going to post it in the Discord today. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thank, thank you for you. all your submissions. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Peace.